So in this example, uh, we've got a subspace of R4 defined as, so the collection of all uh, vectors A, B, C, D, such that A minus 2B plus 3C equals 0. So we've got this condition on the entries of the vector there. And our task is to find a basis for H and then state its dimension. So the first thing I would do here would be probably to take this equation, so a minus 2b plus 3c equals 0, oh, 3c, sorry about that, and I would move the 2b and the 3c to the other side. So I would rewrite this, I'm going to use a, a different color here, as a equals 2b minus 3c. So that means that any vector in this uh, subspace H, so A, B, C, D, if it's going to satisfy this condition here, then A will have to equal 2B minus 3C. So I'm going to replace the A here with 2B minus 3C, and then B, C, D. So we can think of it as um, B, C, and D are the free variables. Um, I mean, we could even you know, take this as a system of equations. So the corresponding matrix for that system would be, I'm going to squeeze it in here, if you guys don't mind. The corresponding matrix for that system would be 1, negative 2, 3. Uh, there's no D in this equation, so I'll put 0 in the D column. Um, equals zero. I could write it that way as an augmented matrix. It's just a single equation. But so, okay, if it's just one row, then this is already in uh, row echelon form. We have a pivot only in column one, so B, uh, C, and D are the free variables here. So that's another argument for what I've arranged here. Um, so now I can decompose that into b times the vector 2, 1, 0, 0 plus c times the vector negative 3, 0, 1, 0. So I'm just writing the coefficients of b and then the coefficients of c and then I also have the free variable d. So d times the vector 0, 0, 0, 1. The only d I have is here and it's coefficient is 1. So there's your d vector. Um, okay, sorry, I was just looking at the, how, what this looks like. I see the reflection of the monitor there, but oh well. Um, anyway, okay, so this means that any um, vector in H can be expressed as a linear combination of these three vectors here. Also notice that if we created a, a matrix whose columns are these three vectors, notice that you would definitely have a pivot in every column. Uh, we could do a bit of, you know, if we really want it officially in row echelon form, then we could do a bit of uh, rearranging and row reducing, um, but you are going to end up with pivots in all three columns for sure. So I'm not going to set up the matrix in row reduce, but if you guys need more convincing, you can do that on your own. So set up a four by three matrix put it in row echelon form, you'll see a pivot in every column, which means these vectors are linearly independent. That's important. Remember the two criteria for a basis. They have to span the vector space, which we've shown here, and they have to be linearly independent, which is what I was just arguing there. So that means that, um, I'll stick with this blue pen, it shows up so well, um, a basis for H would be the collection of those three vectors, two, one, zero, zero, negative 3, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so there's your basis. So once you have a basis, finding the dimension is just a matter of counting. I have 1, 2, 3 vectors um, in that basis. So I'm just trying to get another color to write this. That tells us that the dimension of this subspace H is 3. 